Good evening and a happy 1987 to you. I'm Hugh Downs. Barbara Walters is on assignment tonight, and this is 2020. On the ABC News Magazine, 2020 with Hugh Downs and Barbara Walters. And an artificial heart valve that breaks, that without warning can snap like a paper clip. It's one of several types made by the Shopperation, and it killed this man's wife. They said it was a one in a million thing. But in fact, the death toll has now passed 100. Stone Phillips reports on the danger that's only a heartbeat away. Imagine the anxiety of knowing that the type of artificial heart valve keeping you alive had killed other people when it broke inside their chests. That's a frightening thing to live with. Maybe you'd rather not know. And overall, the odds are this valve will not fail. But if it did, life would depend on immediate action. So wouldn't you want to know just so you could be prepared? Well, some 80,000 people have the artificial valve that we're talking about. And many are unaware of this risk. It's a particular valve made by the Shiley Corporation. Now, valve should be carrying a card that identifies their valve. And only if you have a valve from the Shiley Corporation, and only if that valve has the letter C in the serial number. Only then do you have the valve that we're examining tonight. We're going to repeat this information, apport from Stone Phillips. The last thing I remember is my, when my daughter came in and she put her hands in my hand and I recognized her, her hands. And I think I looked at her and I felt blood coming out of my mouth and I wondered where's the blood coming from. They said this is a once in a million thing. It never happened before. Like a fluke, in a way, just accepted it at that. So many people with these valves, and they think they got a, they really got a cup of tea. They really have a good cup of tea, and they don't know what, what kind of a piece of crap they got inside their chest. Use the expression, but that's all it is. An ex-Marine in Los Angeles, a working mother in Philadelphia, and an air conditioning repairman in Detroit with one thing in common. Their lives all disrupted by the same small device, an art valve with a fatal flaw. It breaks. Artificial valves, roughly the size of a quarter, are put in the heart to replace natural valves that have failed due to birth defects or disease. And all models have some risk of complication. They can cause internal ble blood clots. The valve we're talking about is the Bjork Shiley 60 degree convexo concave, and this model shows how it works. The disc here opens and shuts with each pulse about 40 million times a year. The problem is that the strut or hook that holds the disc in place can break off. The odds of it happening are very small, but when it does, it's an emergency. If the problem isn't diagnosed immediately and the patient rushed into open heart surgery, death is certain. So far, 190 valves have broken. At least 116 people have died. In 1985, Shiley announced a limited recall of the large-sized valves, said to be most prone to failure. And last November, the company withdrew all sizes from the market, stopped manufacturing the valve. But with thousands already implanted, the question is, how do you recall a heart valve that's in somebody's chest? I was told, hey, get the valve. Bob it's Kiernan got his Shiley valve in September 1982 following a stroke that forced him to leave his job as a supermarket meat cutter oh, and his active lifestyle behind. Well, I never got back to where I was before I became disabled. I never got, but I felt good about living. I felt good about breathing. And he felt good about his new artificial heart valve. Its gentle clicking reassured him that both the valve and his heart were functioning. Bob's wife used to joke that it sounded like her car signal. In a quiet room, it sounds like this. Then came Shiley's recall in 1985. Now the clicking is a constant reminder that the valve inside Bob's chest could break. I'm not exactly a mamby-pamby, but it scares the hell out of you, and especially late at night. I get up and roam the, the island because I don't want to listen to my heart tick. I don't want to hear that click click. The thing that used to be a joke is not a joke anymore. Many a day I've knelt by a bed worrying about whether or not uh, he was alive or dead because I couldn't hear it. 
Since the recall, Bob has installed an emergency alert system in his home. Operators who know his medical situation respond easily when he pushes the button. Good morning, Bob. This is Mark. Can I help you, please? No, Mark. Just checking out the equipment. And every two months, he goes to the hospital for an echocardiogram, a test that measures blood flow in and out of the heart. Learning the potentially defective heart valve in his chest without getting totally paranoid has not been easy. But doctors say Bob and thousands of others with this Shiley valve have no other choice. The risk of replacing the valve is greater than leaving it in. It would mean another round of open heart surgery, more trauma, and more chances that something could go wrong. So we're kind of damned if we do and damned if we don't. It is a no man's land. There is no answer to it. You can't repair, go back, you have it, and you just live from day to day. The Kiernans are now suing Shiley. Mary Southard, a mother of four in Detroit, got her Shiley valve four years ago as well. Hers broke Thanksgiving Day, 1982. Her hall's listening to hear if the valve was still clicking. It stopped. It didn't click anymore. And she got up and she said it felt like, uh, like an explosion in her chest. They raced to the hospital. When we got there, they said that... Uh, she had quit breathing and uh, done open heart surgery on her all over again. A second Shiley valve was implanted. They said it was a one in a million thing, never happened before. And I said, what's the odds in it happening again now that she had already had this new valve installed? And they said it'd be one in a trillion. A week before Christmas, 1983, Mary Shiley valve broke. She died in surgery. The Southards have also filed suit against Shiley. The Shiley company, owned by Pfizer Incorporated, is one of the world's biggest manufacturers of artificial heart valves. And it knew this particular valve before it even went on the market. As this report shows, one valve broke during testing in 1978, killing the patient. So why was it allowed on the market? The Food and Drug Administration here in Washington, D.C., went ahead and approved the valve in 1970, knowing it wasn't perfect, because the benefits of its new design, fewer blood clots and less bleeding, were said to outweigh the risk of fracture. But the valves kept breaking two more that year, and the recalls began, first in 1980, then again in 1982. With each recall, Shiley changed the manufacturing or quality control tests at its plants in Irvine, California, and Puerto Rico. And each time, the company reassured doctors that the valves were safer and sent them back on the market. Shiley reassured the FDA as well, but the facts weren't always on the table. In the original permit to sell the valve, the FDA required Shiley to submit within 10 days complete reports on any injuries due to the valve. According to this internal FDA memorandum, the company waited as long as 10 months before revealing fractures. Shiley claims it took that long to get complete data, but other fractures were never reported. In June 1982, the FDA wrote Shiley, saying the valve problem posed, quote, an unreasonable risk of substantial harm to the public health, and the company stop distributing the valve until Shiley had satisfied the FDA that it was safe. Shiley refused, claiming that the FDA didn't understand the facts and that the failure rate was not unacceptably high. Two years later, 91 valves, and the FDA wrote Shiley again, asking the company to voluntarily cease distribution and withdraw all sizes. Again, Shiley said no. So why didn't the FDA force the valve off the market? FDA officials refused to be interviewed, but wrote to 2020 they couldn't justify banning the valve because even with its unique fracture problem, its overall performance was no worse than other valves on the market. By October 1985, more than 150 valves had fractured, and lawsuits against Shiley were piling up. The company finally agreed to withdraw for good the large-sized valves responsible for most of the fractures, and just five weeks ago, the remaining small sizes were withdrawn as well. One person who tried to point out the problems was George Sherry, a former Shiley engineer, frustration, saying management wasn't doing enough. Sherry says he told the company in 1982 that the problem began with a poor welding process used to attach the hook to the ring. The result was contaminated welds, incons welds, process varying from day to day, product varying from day to day. 
And the welds were weakened by stress, Sherry said, when plant operators bent the hook to install the valve disc, a routine of the assembly process. Right at these points is where the, weld, where the bending was taking place. With the latest in modern technology, a type of pliers like this, the hook first one side and then the other to capture the disc in its proper place. How many times were some of these struts bent uh, to install the disc? Maybe two or three times, or it could be as many as eight or ten times. Sherry also demonstrated for us how some valves were put in a vise and the tiny hooks stretched or squeezed so the disc would open to the proper angle. Again, more at the welds. Using pliers and vices to achieve close tolerances is just an appalling way to make anything. Henry Peeler, an expert in metallurgy, has examined more than a dozen broken Shiley valves for plaintiffs filing suit against the company. Found with his scanning electron microscope supports what George Sherry said about bad welds. Peeler spotted cracks, pores, and signs of bending. We're now looking at a magnification of about uh, 670 these lines here indicate bending that has occurred in the process of fabrication. And that bending, again, makes this entire structure susceptible to fatigue failure. So in all of the devices that I have examined, every failure has been weld-related. Peeler says the solution to Shiley's problem was obvious years ago. Don't weld. Manufacture the valve in one piece to make sure it doesn't break. In fact, such a valve already exists, designed by Shiley years ago. It's called the Monostrut, and it's been available overseas since 1982, implanted in some 20,000 patients with no fractures reported. Shiley's application to sell the valve here is pending FDA. Officials at Shiley refused to be interviewed on camera for this story. In response to letters from 2020, the company repeated its claim that even with the fractures, the valve was a significant improvement over earlier models. And the company urged us not to report on the subject. The valve issue affects a small number of patients, and our broadcast would raise unjustified fears. Shiley did send a taped statement by its president. Here's a portion of that. The 60-degree convexo-concave valve was widened by heart surgeons because it reduced problems of blood clotting seen with other valves. Despite the low incidence of mechanical failures, the 60-degree CC valve remained on the market because our company and the FDA felt that the clinical benefit of reduced blood significantly outweighed the small risk of strep fracture. Despite our continued confidence in the clinical benefits of this valve, we recently withdrew all small size 60-degree CC valves from the market. We did this because controversy and negative publicity reduced usage of the CC valve to the point that continued production was no longer warranted. We have always kept the FDA and the medical community fully informed of the 60-degree CC valuation. As for whistleblower George Sherry, Shiley points out that Mr. Sherry does not have an engineering degree and says many of his suggestions on welding were tested and most proved unworkable or ineffective. The company further points out that 60 degree CC valve manufactured after September 1983 has had a strut fracture. That's encouraging news, but valves manufactured before September 1983 continue to break at an average of more than three a month. Jerry Taylor, a 47-year-old waitress in Philadelphia, was never warned that her Shiley valve might break. It happened early one Sunday morning in 1985, and she nearly died. I remember I guess lightheadedness just was just like it was running out of my feet. That's the way I felt. Jerry's son was the only other person home at the time. She just, she wasn't moving. She just was lying on the bed. Martin called an ambulance and Jerry was rushed to a nearby hospital. They had no idea it was the valve until Jerry's daughter talked to the surgeon that night. He showed me the valve. He had put it in a little plastic bag and he told me that it had broke. And he, um, one of the pieces he told me had traveled, and they had to go in and find it. Um, and he told me now it was a wait and see how she would do. 
after surgery in intensive care constantly. Every time I would wake up and I'd look at these kids and I'd say, oh, God, I'll never make it. Um, what's going on? I didn't know what had happened. Today, Jerry Taylor has a different artificial heart valve and a class action suit against Shiley. She says the company should have told her and the thousands of others who have the valve that there was a problem. Shiley's policy is not to warn, but to notify doctors instead and leave it to them to tell their patients, a policy generally supported by the medical community. But some of the warnings read more like promotional announcements. This letter from 1983 cites the risk of fracture, but concludes by noting the excellent performance, calling it the most effective cardiac prosthesis available, and never mentions that perhaps patients should be alerted. Jerry Taylor thinks that's wrong. Not everybody can accept the truth, but they show in this case, because there may be changes in their life that they would have to make in order to save their life if and when it should happen to them. Now, before we talk to Stone Phillips, we want to repeat what valve it is we're talking about. It's the Bjork Shiley degree convexo concave. It's one of several valves made by the Shiley Corporation. Now, if you're a valve patient, this valve would be identified on your wallet card by the letter C in the serial number. So you may want to check your wallet card on that. If you've lost your card or never got one, what do you do then? Well, you should have received a card at the time of the implant if you're a, a Shiley patient. If you didn't get one, you should basically consult your surgeon, find out, and he can tell you exactly what kind of heart valve you have. What is the perspective on the risk to these patients? Say that the vast majority of people out there with artificial heart valves can relax, they don't have this particular valve. And even those who do, remember, Shiley reports that even in the worst group of valves, only about 1% are thought to have broken, a very small percentage. Small risk. Still, right. there is a risk, and people should know, they may want to take precautionary steps. Thank you, Stone.